actually started. And yeah, so uh, it is then at QA, yes, no question answering data set to the Russian language. Uh, and uh, it will be presented by Katerina Artemova and Alexei Machnev. And uh, you have 20 minutes. The floor is yours. You're welcome. Yeah, hi. Just to make sure, can everybody see the screen? Yes. Okay. So, hi everyone, my name is Katya Artyomova, I'm with the Harris School of Economics, and today my colleagues and I are going to present a new data set we created for the Russian language. And before we jump into details, I'd like to make two short notes. First of all, for those of you who don't speak Russian, I, don't, I would like to explain the title of the data set. So in the Russian language, Danyet stands for yes, no in English. So as this data set comprises natural yes, no, otherwise binary questions, um, this kind of um, joke to um, emphasize the nature of the data set that it is in Russian and it comprises this yes, no questions. And secondly, we started doing this project as an independent project. But then, uh, thanks to the Bear initiative on creation um, of the Russia Super Glue benchmark, we became a part of this benchmark. Thus, uh, we collaborate on this data set with uh, the team from Sbeer, and there are two authors um, of the paper who work at, the, at this time of Sbeer. Uh, so, the, anyways, um, the talk would be um, the talk is structured in two parts. I'll start with um, describing how the data set was collected and what was our the, what was our intuition behind uh, the creation of the data set. And then I'll give the word to Alexei who will present the methods um, and baselines we established for the data set. <clears throat> so basically uh, the data set Daniel QA comprises, as I said already, yes, no questions. So such questions that can be answered with either yes or no. Um, you can see a sample from the data set of this slide currently. And we have, uh, so each entry to the data set is threefold. First of all, we have a question that can be answered with either yes or no. We have this either yes or no answer. And oh, sorry, all... I, was, um, I was supposed to give slides. I mean, your slides are not visible right now. Uh, We're seeing only your desktop. Really? Um, wait. Uh, it's just because you told me to stop share and then everything is not working. Um, is this way better? Yeah, now we can if see I, If I change yep, the slides. Yep, okay. Yep. Everything's okay. okay. Now. Thanks, Justin. Here. Cool. Um, yeah. Oh, so where was I? Uh, I was describing the entries to the data set. So each entry is threefold. You can see it, I hope, right now at the slide. Uh, we have a question, we have an answer, and also we have a passage extracted from Wikipedia. And the model is expected to read this passage and based on this passage, uh, give the yes, no answer. So uh, in a sense, we follow two data sets previously created. The first one of them is squad, obviously, because in the squad data set, you also have these passages, which should serve as the source uh, for the answer. And secondly, we follow the BullQ data set, which was created at Google. And basically, it was Google's first idea to use yes no questions as a new and challenging data set. However, uh, as BullQ was created at Google, they mostly used their uh, proprietary technologies to create this data set. And it's very hard to reproduce it without the sources of data uh, that Google has. So don't be like Google, don't use your technologies because other people don't have same sources and they cannot create such um, data sets. Anyways, we somehow managed to follow more or less BullQ design to collect our data set. And uh, another uh, thought we have in mind that there is very little done 
in terms of question answering data sets for the Russian language. However, uh, the chatbot technology and the question answering technologies are uh, right now really demanded in Russia. So we need to provide more data sets, both for academia and for industrial communities so that it will be more sources to train uh, question answering systems. All right, uh, so uh, the creation of the data set was, um, has several steps. We started by, um, by kind of generating the questions. Uh, we didn't generate them in a sense we asked some models to um, predict uh, to generate them, but rather we asked cross sourcers and use cross source cross sourcing platforms, and collected questions from crowd sources. And having these questions, uh, we used uh, Google API uh, to retrieve Wikipedia pages, and then we made another round of annotations on crowd sourcing platforms by asking the crowd sourcers to read the question, read the passage from Wikipedia and provide with the yes, no answer. But I'll go into more details right now. Uh, so first of all, uh, as I said, we went to uh, Yandex Taloka, which is a crowdsourcing platform, which uh, basically is created by Yandex and thus supports the major uh, the, a lot of um, languages from our region, obviously Russian including. And we ask, um, ask the crowd sources to um, create such questions that would follow some templates and which obviously would have yes or no answers. So we kind of um, showed the crowd sources um, several templates, but said that you're not really limited to them, but you can use them as a source to inspiration. Uh, to ask these yes and no questions. For example, uh, one of the templates included words um, in Russian, is it true that, or um, does exist something like, and blah, 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 and the consortiums would have to create questions using these templates. We also limited the topics that the consortiums would use for creation of the uh, questions because we didn't want to have something um, obscene or something inappropriate in the data set. Um, and then we had to, to manually filter out some of the questions that indeed were inappropriate. Um, and with this step of data set creation uh, resulted in a list of questions. Some of them were indeed following our expectations and were and could be answered with yes or no, but some of them were um, not really bad in terms they were grammatically correct and they were uh, perfectly fine from topical point of view, but they didn't follow the time uh, the templates and they uh, couldn't be answered with yes or no. So basically these were all questions that started with which words, but obviously in Russian. So we manually and not really manually, but using some regular expressions and manual filtering, we filtered these questions out. Then we went to um, Google API and retrieved from uh, Google three Wikipedia page for each question. Uh, if there were, um, if it was not possible to retrieve three Wikipedia pages, we thought that this question uh, was corrupted and didn't use it further. Uh, and um, given these three questions, uh, three Wikipedia pages we retrieved from Google, we had to select from these um, Wikipedia pages relevant passages that would be further annotated with crowdsourcers. Uh, to do this, we followed a pre-trained model from Deep Pavlov. This model was pre-trained for Squad, and it was uh, it helped us to retrieve the passage that probably contains the answer to the question. Uh, we are not completely sure that the answer is uh, that this answer is correct or this answer does fit into our design, but it helped us to collect the passages for the second step of annotation. Um, in this slide, we um, explain the way we pre-processed Wikipedia articles, but I don't think we need to stop here um, and 
pay a lot of attention to this because every one of you have worked with Wikipedia and you know how to pre-process Wikipedia. Uh, so the second step of crowdsourcing annotation um, was the following. Now we have these questions and now we have some passages from Wikipedia. We're not completely sure that these passages contain answers. So ask the crowdsourcers to read the passages carefully and to say whether there is a, uh, whether the answer to the question based on this um, passage is yes or no. And surprisingly, it turns out to be not a very easy task for the crowdsourcers. And uh, when I was preparing this talk, I found multiple educational videos on YouTube explaining how to complete this task. Um, it was very kind for the crowdsourcers to share uh, samples from our data set and some instructions on how to create it on YouTube. Uh, yeah, and the purposes of this step was twofold. First of all, we wanted to filter out question passages pairs they don't that don't fit into the design of the data set, and secondly, we want the desired answers. Um, I mean, yes or no answers. Um, finally, a uh, few more words about the quality of the annotation. Uh, we selected only the annotation that uh, those, we ensure the quality of the annotations by selecting only annotators that are fluent in Russian. Uh, we provided with some preliminary training uh, examples, which were recorded to YouTube further. Uh, we selected only those uh, annotators that have high rating in uh, Deloka. And also um, we used the high overlap values to ensure that the labels select um, that the labels are selected by multiple annotators, not a single one. So we used majority voting to um, ensure that the answer indeed passes for the question. And we resulted in um, the data set, um, in basically the results of the data uh, of this all procedures is the data set. And right now you can see another sample. Uh, so the question is uh, whether Neil Armstrong was indeed on the moon. And you can read the passage and decide that yes, it was indeed on the moon. Uh, the hints shown here are the samples um, from the squat model provide uh, from the squat model, which we used to collect the passages. Um, another example of the data set entry is again right now at the slide, so I don't think I need to translate it, but anyways. Uh, so we ended up uh, in a um, middle range. Uh, middle scale data set. So it's not really small, but again, it's not as large as the one created by Google. Uh, we split the data set uh, in a standard split. So everyone um, can access train and def um, parts of the data set, but the test part is private and it belongs to the Russian Superglue project, which we're a part of. Um, and uh, finally, this um, slide shows um, the topics present in the data set. It's um, very different from the one created by Google because in the English data set, um, the most popular topics aren't um, history or war, but there are more sports, sports and um, series related. But, um, we have some cultural differences and thus the topical differences in the data set too. Um, and finally, um, these slides show the first uh, words of the question. Of the questions, uh, you can see that the majority of them follow um, kind of the same patterns. So there is a verb and the word li, which is used to ask the yes or no question. Uh, in fact, uh, from this list, um, from this 15 um, 
prefixes of the questions, not all of them were provided by us. So not all of these templates are forced by us. And there is a lot of creativity from the crowdsourcers included in these questions. Okay, so um, I'm done with creating the data set, uh, with describing how the data set was created. And now I'd like to ask Alexei to explain a little bit more about the baselines we established. Hello, uh, I will discuss our experiments on training models to achieve the best accuracy on our data, data set. So first of all, we have three baselines. There are uh, pre-trained and uh, not pre-trained fast text classifier, and also Robert uh, fine-tuned or uh, Deep Pavlov's Robert uh, fine-tuned uh, for our task. Uh, as expected, the best baseline is achieved with the Rupert model. So the next slide, please. Mm. Uh, I will discuss our experiments on training models to achieve the best accuracy uh, on our dat data set. Oh, excuse me. Then we did experiments on pre-training and fine-tuning transformers. Uh, pre-trained model, uh, like Rupert or XLMR, uh, are pre-trained on related task. Uh, and then fine-tuned on train part on Danetka data set. Uh, we divide related tasks into two groups, uh, task transferring and the language transferring. All task transferring data sets are Russian and uh, tasks are related but different uh, from yes, no question answering. Uh, there are those tasks, those data sets. Uh, the, there is a paraphraser uh, the task is uh, to find if uh, two phrases uh, have uh, the, the same sense. Then uh, this is XNLI. Uh, the task is uh, to decide whether one sentence is entailment, contradiction, or not related to another. And the uh, question answering data set from Sberbank uh, is uh, a classic uh, QA data set uh, for Russian language. So language transferring assumes uh, using the same data set uh, like ident identical that data set is identical to ours but on the different language so uh, like book q uh, is an english data set and uh, also the task is to answer uh, questions uh, yes or, or no uh, for this purpose we of course you use balku data set which uh, has the same idea and task but uh, data set is english we perform two approaches to pre uh, train on this data set for, uh, for the first uh, the data set is translated to russian with uh, machine translation and as for all task uh, transferring uh, attempts uh, we used uh, the Pavlov's Rupert uh, for this. Uh, for the second uh, approach, we pre-trained multilingual model, XLMR model, on original uh, BullQ dataset, not, not translated BullQ, and then fine-tuned it on our dataset. Uh, and uh, the next slide. Uh, so, uh, as as our data set is uh, highly imbalanced, uh, imbalanced as expected, uh, about eighty percent of yes answers. Uh, resultant resulting model may be biased and most likely to predict yes answer. So, to handle this problem, we found what that accuracy could be raised by almost 1.1% uh, uh, by selecting good threshold for yes answer. So in our experiments, we first uh, built a precision recall curve. Uh, it's displayed uh, on the bottom of the slide. Uh, an example of this curve for uh, our day, uh, some mo model we've trained and uh, select uh, a threshold which maximized uh, F1 score. Moreover, 
the last model checkpoint may be not the best one in case of metrics on validation and test data set. It may be simply overfitted. So uh, we select the best threshold and evaluate, or not, not the best threshold and the best checkpoint with that uh, threshold and evaluate uh, on test data using that um, best threshold, best the uh, best threshold and best checkpoint. Uh, both. Uh, best uh, threshold and best checkpoint uh, are found uh, with the validation part of data. So find threshold and uh, uh, and checkpoint with testing on validation part of data and uh, we've tested it on, on test part. All metrics are calculated on test part of our data. And the next slide, please. Um, in summary, uh, as you can see, the best uh, results are reached by XLM error model. Uh, and uh, the second, uh, the second uh, result uh, in our top uh, is reached with a pre-training on translated bulk queue. Uh, thus, as expected, uh, language transferring uh, shows the best uh, results uh, because uh, its data set is most similar to ours. So, bull Q is question is yes/no question answering. And ours data set is also yes/no question answering. Uh, nevertheless, uh, the best result for task transferring is achieved by pre-training on Sberbank QA data set. Uh, and uh, it, the result is uh, close to language transferring approach. So uh, I s we suppose that um, that is because uh, Sberbank QA data set is uh, the largest Russian data set and its task is closest to our task uh, as uh, the task is also question answering ta task. Uh, uh, to sum up, uh, our experiments support the idea that uh, transfer learning often uh, help us to achieve better results with uh, the given task. Uh, the next slide, please. Uh, so as a result of our work, we have created a new yes, no question answering data set for Russian language. Uh, while collecting this data set, we found how to set Yandex Taloka crowdsourcing crowdsourcing platform for sufficient data generation and annotation. We have made a baseline for solving yes, no question answering task and experimented with uh, some transfer, transfer learning approaches. Our experiment results show that uh, pre-training on identical data set with different language performs better than pre-training on different task with the same language. Now, nonetheless, uh, we can't reuse bulk Q data set with keeping the uh, .NET QA data set for evaluation only. So uh, I've done, I have finished. Uh, you're welcome to ask your questions. Yeah, uh, thanks. Uh, any questions? We have, I guess, about like three or four minutes questions. You're welcome. Actually, there is a question in the chat. If you can uh, yeah. read it and answer, that would be great. I can think. I think I can start with answering the question in the chat. And uh, this is Olga Lyshevska who asked uh, whether we did experiment with splitting the wiki text into different batches or with sliding text fragment uh, boundaries while asking different respondents. Uh, she has used that the information needed for the answer can be placed in more than one sentence and even one paragraph. We indeed experiment with uh, sliding fragments. So the results, so the resulting data set is created for, from choosing the um, best fragment uh, of the multiple overlapping ones. So, um, yeah, the, answer, so the answer is yes, <laughs> we did this and we included uh, um, we kept this in mind. And also in the data set, uh, you can find that there are different answers to the same question based on different paragraphs. 
So the number of questions is less than the number of paragraphs and the questions are not unique. And sometimes based on different paragraphs, the annotators um, came up with different decisions. And um, I can answer the second question. Yeah, thank you. Uh, we um, ran uh, fi uh, five uh, runs for each configuration. Uh, maybe, uh, yes, uh, we pre-trained uh, each model five times, then selected the best one and uh, run, ran fine tuning also five times and uh, calculated uh, mean and uh, deviation for each uh, for each configuration across those uh, five runs. Thank you. Uh, thanks. Uh, we have time maybe for one uh, additional small question. Okay, just a quick question for me. Uh, maybe I didn't notice. Uh, so the data set uh, is available right now? Or? Yeah, the data set is available. Uh, only the test part is private. Mm -hmm. You can, yeah, in the repo of our lab and also in the Russian Glue project, you can find the test and the, sorry, the train and the jet parts for your data set. It's publicly available. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, thanks a lot. Uh, and uh, we move on to the next talk, uh, which is uh, uh, BERT for sequence to sequence multi label text specification by Ramil Yurin and Ayo Serdikov. And uh, I guess Ramil is going to 